requirement engineering process. So, in this particular session, we shall have this topic to discuss. The process to gather the software requirements from the client, analyze and document them is known as the requirement engineering. That means, from the client, from the stakeholders, we are supposed to take the requirement list and those requirements are to be analyzed and should be documented in a proper way and that is falling in this requirement engineering. So, the goal of requirement engineering is to develop and maintain sophisticated and descriptive system requirement specification document. So, that is the main purpose of this requirement engineering. So, it is a four step process which includes feasibility study, requirement gathering, software requirement specification in short we usually call it as SRS and then software requirement validation. So, let us go for the feasibility study, then we shall go for requirement gathering, then we shall go for software requirement specification and then we shall go for software requirement validation. So, in this way we, are, we shall have our separate slides on each and every topic. We are going, to, going with starting with our feasibility study. When the client approaches the organization for getting the desired product developed, it comes up with a rough idea about what all functions the software must perform and what or which all features are expected from the software to get implemented. So, in the initial discussion with the client, with the initial discussion with the customer, we shall be getting that the rough idea regarding the what are the functions the software should do and what are the features the software should implement. So, referencing to this information, the analysis do a detailed study about whether the desired system and its functionality are feasible to develop and that will be done in our feasibility study. Next one, we are going for the next one that is our requirement gathering. So, if the feasibility report is positive towards undertaking the project, then the next phase starts with the gathering requirements from the user. So, analysts and engineers communicate with the client and end users to know their ideas on what the software should provide and which features they want the software to include. So, now they are going for the further detailing, doing further communication with the users, with the client, so that they can get the idea that after doing the feasibility study, we got the report, let it be positive that will be taking this particular project. So, now this requirement gathering will be done more did more into the details so that the software can be developed. We know that what are the functionalities to be implemented and what are the features will be there in the software. Next one is our SRS that is the software requirement specification. So, SRS is a document created by system analysts after the requirements are collected from various stakeholders. We discuss this stakeholder, what is the meaning of this stakeholder? So, stakeholder means those persons who are positively or negatively affected by the execution of the project. So, SRS defines how the intended software will interact with the hardware, external interfaces, speed of operation, response time of the system, portability of the software across different platforms. What is the platform? Platform means the software that is the operating system and the respective hardware in, com in combination of them we can we can call it as the platform. And then maintainability, speed of recovery after crashing, security, quality, limitations etcetera. So, all these things will be kept in a proper documentation and that is our SRS. So, the requirements received from the client are written in natural language. So, whatever the language you are uh, considering. So, that will be written that one, it might be English or some other languages also, but it is not a programming language. So, that I can assure you. So, it is the responsibility of the system analyst to document the requirements in technical language, so that they can be comprehended and they can be comprehended and used by the software development team. 
So, in this particular case, we can also use some technical language so that it can be comprehended and can be used by the software development team. So, that is the language of this SRS. So, SRS should come up with the following features. So, what are the features it should have? So, user requirements are expressed in natural language. Technical requirements are expressed in structured language which is used inside the organization and then design description should be written in some pseudocode that is in some algorithmic form it will be written in some pseudocode. We know that in case of pseudocode it is language independent, we are, not, we are not maintaining any kind of syntax. What is the meaning of the term syntax? Means the grammar that means here we will be writing this particular requirement in some technical pseudocode. So, that the developer can implement that one when the phase will come. So, it will be written in some syntax free pseudocode and then format of the forms and the GUI screens, the prints will be made and then conditional and mathematical notations for DFDs and etcetera. So, DFD means data flow diagram. So, we are having a separate video on the DFDs, you can easily go for that and we are also having a separate video on the pseudocode and all. So, these are the different the SRS should contain all these things. Now, we are going for the last phase that is the software requirement validation. So, that is the fourth one. What were the earlier three one? So, the first one was feasibility study, we discussed that one. The next one was requirement gathering and the third one was software requirement specification SRS and the fourth one is software requirement validation. So, all after arranging all these things in the software requirement specification. So, after requirement specifications are developed, the requirements mentioned in the document are validated. So, user might ask for legal impractical solutions or experts may interpret the requirements inaccurately. So, this result this results in huge increase in cost if not nipped in the bud. So, that is why requirements can be checked against following conditions. So, what about the requirements we had? We have maintained that one in the properly documented way in the form of DFDs, in the form of some uh, natural language, in the form of some pseudocodes in our SRS. But here I should have to check whether really they are validated or not. So, if they can be practically implemented, so then obviously we will be considering that one. If they are valid and as per functionality and domain of software, if they are any, if there are any ambiguities, if there is no ambiguity, then obviously you can take that one, the validation will be successful. If they are complete and if they can be demonstrated. So, this, these are the main uh, features of this software requirement validation. So, let us go for one diagram. So, here we are having the software requirements. So, now in the scenario based models, we can use the use cases where the users stories can be mapped. In case of class models, we can go for the class diagrams and the collaboration diagrams. So, in the case of behavioral models, we can go for state diagrams and sequence diagrams. Also here, we can consider the activity diagram. In case of flow models, we are having the DFDs, the data models. So, I am having a separate tutorial on UML. So, there we have discussed what is the collaboration diagram, what is the class diagram, what is the state chart diagram, what is the sequence diagram, activity diagram, what is use case diagram. Please watch that one because in this particular tutorial, we have not included any UML chapter because we are having a separate tutorial on this UML. So, there you will be getting this detailing idea that how these diagrams will look like and also these DFDs will be discussing that one in the next video. So, so what is the DFD and how the diagram has to be drawn. So, these are the software requirements and these are the different models for which the different diagrams are applicable. So, we have discussed that is the elements of software requirement analysis. Thanks for watching this video. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.